Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what the square root of negative 1 is equal to. Now, if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. As a matter of fact, I will even uh, go as far as uh, saying use your calculator, okay? Now, if you have like a basic calculator, maybe even like your cell phone, your calculator might give you like a question mark. You may not know the answer, okay? And I'm not going to reveal too much because I want to uh, get you kind of uh, interested in what's going to be going on with this particular uh, number. But if you have something more um, advanced, maybe like a scientific calculator, definitely like a uh, TI-84 graphing calculator, something very advanced like that, well, you probably will get the correct answer. Uh, but here's the deal. Even though your calculator will give you the answer, you know, do you understand what the answer is? So I'm kind of leaving things kind of vague here. Uh, for a second because I want to give you an opportunity to see if you know the right answer. And if you do, again, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you uh, the correct answer here in just one second, and then we're going to have a quick discussion on what's going on with the square root of negative 1. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can be successful in mathematics, but what you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics and you need additional help, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a uh, link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be preparing for any sort of test with a math section, most of you out there are going to probably be taking a test like this. You don't even realize it. I'm talking about entrance exams, placement exams, certification exams, things like the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, teacher certification, Alex, AccuPlacer. You get the idea. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my middle and high school mathematics uh, program for homeschoolers. If you need a pair of great math notes, I'm going to leave links to my uh, notes in the description of this video as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the answer. The square root of negative 1 is equal to what? Well, let me go ahead and show you the answer right now. It's equal to i. Now, a lot of you might be saying to yourself, you know, like, hey, wait a minute. i is not even a number. What are you talking about? Uh, you know, you're expecting some sort of value. Maybe you said this, the square root of negative 1 is equal to uh, negative 1. Now, if you uh, put this down as your answer, that's okay. Probably a lot of you um, answer this uh, question this way, but this is incorrect. Let's go ahead and talk about that here in a second. But first of all, if you knew the answer and you got this answer right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%. Matter of fact, we'll throw in a few bonus stars because that's pretty impressive. Okay, so what does it mean? Let me kind of go back to here. If I'm asking uh, you the square root of 9, okay, if I'm trying to figure this out, what am I really saying? Well, what we're looking for is a number times itself that gets us back to 9, okay? So the square root of 9 is what? Hopefully you said, oh, isn't that uh, 3? And you would be correct. Positive 3, it's going to be explicit with that. Positive 3 times a positive 3 gets us back to a positive 9. Okay, but is this the only number that gets us back to a positive 9? No. If we multiply negative 3 times a negative 3, we also get back to a positive 9. So when you think about this, if you said, well, the square root of negative 1 is negative 1, well, let's test that. Okay, so negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Okay, we're looking for the square root of negative 1. So we didn't get back to a negative 1, so this is an issue, right? So you're like, well, what's going on? Well, uh, the answer, again, is this thing, i. So what does this mean? Well, I'm going to go ahead and explain that now. Okay, so let's first talk about something called real numbers. Now, these are all the numbers that you pretty much um, start learning with when you're, you know, start learning mathematics. Uh, what do you first do when you're a tiny little baby? You start learning what? Well, you start learning. You start to learn how to count. They're like, oh, there's one uh, dog. Here is two dogs. You so you start counting things by using the digits of your uh, hand, for example, right? One, two, etc. These are called the natural numbers or counting numbers. And then we throw in this number zero. Like, hey, there is no dog, so we need some sort of symbol to represent nothing. So we have zero, and then eventually you start learning the positive and negative numbers and fractions and decimals. All these numbers here, 
are on what we call the real number line. This is pretty much what um, all of us have been familiar with up until around, you know, uh, your study into like Algebra 1, Algebra 2. So if I asked you uh, what the square root of uh, 9 is, well, the answer is what? We already talked about that. It's both positive and negative 3. I can locate the answers, whoop, positive and negative 3. Let me write that negative uh, 3 right there. So we can locate these answers here on the number line, the real number line. So the square root of a positive 9, uh, its answer, again, is in the part of the real number system. But as we said, we have the square root of negative 1. Well, what's its answer? Well, it's not a part of this number system, okay? We need to actually go to another math galaxy, another number system. So let's talk about that right now. Okay, so what we're talking about is something called complex numbers. So the square root of negative 1 is kind of um, uh, kind of our introduction to something called complex numbers. So what you need to know is this. The numbers that you've studied up to this part of um, your math education have been real numbers. We learn real numbers. We master all this stuff, for positive and negative numbers, fractions, decimals, uh, square roots, square roots of positive values. So that's the real numbers. But when we come across a situation like this, we need to open up uh, our uh, number systems to more complicated number, six, number systems, and that's why we have the complex numbers. Now, notice this little notation here. Uh, this uh, little bracket right here in mathematics is uh, kind of typical of what we call a set. So if you see a C like that, that could be like the complex number system or a big R like that that could, uh, would represent the real number system, or sometimes you'll have like that, the set of real numbers. So just a little bit about uh, mathematical notation. Now, when you're looking at complex numbers, we're going to see that complex numbers take the form of something called A plus BI. Okay, so this is what a complex number looks like. And let's go ahead and explore that right now. Okay, so complex number is in the basic form of A plus BI. And complex numbers are a huge part of mathematics, especially more advanced math. I'm not going to get into like a full lesson on complex numbers. I'm just going to give you a quick introduction so we can answer this question, what the square root of negative 1 is. But anyways, complex numbers take the form of A plus BI. So the A, okay, part of a, uh, of a complex number is a real component. Okay, now here I have an example of a complex number, 7 plus 2i. This right here would be considered one complex number. So its real component is a real number, 7. Okay, so your first number with this a plus bi will be some number from the real number line. Okay, it could be a fraction, decimal doesn't make a difference. Uh, so in this case, we have 7. All right, now the bi portion, well, this part of a complex number is called the imaginary part. Okay, and you'll always have this little i right here behind some sort of number, all right? So what is i? Well, i is equal to, very specifically, the square root of negative 1, okay? This is what makes an imaginary number an imaginary number. So, for example, in this particular complex number, the imaginary part would be 2i, where this i is equivalent to the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 1, if I wanted to be more technical about it, okay, would be just be 0 plus i. So 0 would be the real part, and then the imaginary part would be a 1i, okay? So um, let's put that little right there, a little imaginary part. But let's um, talk about why uh, this is important. Let's go to a problem like this. <clears throat> uh, let's take the square root of negative 4, all right? Well, uh, if we put this into our calculator, by the way, if you did put this into your calculator, a lot of you probably had uh, something pop up in your window that said error. Your calculator is confused. You're like, hey, I can't find two numbers such that I multiply them together. It gets me back to negative 4 because your calculator, you know, at least the more basic calculators, are operating uh, only within the real numbers. If you have a more advanced calculator, it's smart enough to know, oh, you're talking about an imaginary number, so it will uh, give you like an I as the answer. But here, for example, uh, the square root of negative 4, if we wanted to figure this out, we could write this this way. The square root of uh, negative 4 is equal to 4 times negative 1. Okay, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 
now we have a property of square roots that can basically pull this one big square root into two separate square roots of the factors here. So that would be square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. Okay, so what is the square root of 4? We'll just take the uh, principal square root, the positive answer. That would be 2. And what is the square root of negative 1? Well, again, by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i. Okay, so the answer here would be 2i. All right, so that's a quick introduction to complex numbers and how they, you know, uh, relate to the real number system. So uh, you pretty much start seeing the complex numbers in any course. Um, well, you might uh, kind of get a quick introduction into, like, let's say a first-year algebra course, something like Algebra 1. But definitely as you get into Algebra 2, college algebra is certainly pre-calculus. You are heavy duty into complex numbers. There's so much more to know about complex numbers. If you're studying complex numbers, um, let me get on, give you, I'll give you a couple suggestions. One, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel about complex numbers, but I'd probably steer you towards my Algebra 2 course, College Algebra. If you're at the pre-calculus level, um, you know, I have uh, that course as well. But again, you're just getting a quick introduction at the Algebra uh, 1 level in terms of type of roots, etc. So anyways, you know, if you've never seen complex numbers again, you will see them as you continue to study Algebra. But if this video was interesting and it helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.